Hello again. 60 years ago, almost every child in Britain grew up in a home with a mother and father who were married to each other and remained so throughout their lives. The advantages of this way of life are fairly obvious. The child has two role models, one male and the other female. There were very few gender identity problems in those days because children learned with their mother's milk that men and women were different and were suited to different roles. Boys knew that they would grow up to be men and girls expected in the course of time to become women. As adolescents, these children were careful about choosing a husband or wife because they knew that this was to be a lifelong commitment and that the ultimate purpose of marriage was to have children who would be loved and cherished. There were homosexuals, of course, but they pursued their lifestyle quietly, and as long as they were discreet, they were able to do so without any trouble. It goes without saying that there were problems for some. There will always be problems for some individuals in whatever society and however it's constituted. There were unpleasant or violent husbands, and sometimes women were raped um, because abortion was illegal. They were compelled to bear the child of the rapist. There was also a problem when a girl became pregnant out of marriage, with stigma attached to this. These were all minor difficulties, though, affecting a very small number of people. For children in general, traditional morality was a marvellous thing which ensured that their childhoods were stable and secure. In the mid-1960s, a series of laws were passed which were supposed to alleviate problems for that tiny number of people I mentioned above. For example, the lives of some women were at risk if they were to carry a baby to term and give birth. This was very rare, but it did happen. And sometimes, as I say, women were raped, and if they were pregnant, could do nothing but give birth to the child. Abortion was completely illegal. So it was that a law was passed which legalised abortion for this very small group. It was presented as an enlightened and progressive measure, which would not affect ordinary people in any way at all. Abortion is now a huge industry, with over 200,000 abortions being carried out in Britain every year. For some women, abortion, which is to say the killing of an unborn baby, is their preferred method of birth control. State-sanctioned abortion is also used as part of a very seldom spoken of eugenics programme. How many viewers are aware that every 12 hours in Britain a baby is aborted because it is suspected to have Down syndrome? I give a reference for this figure in the description to this video. This then is one way in which a law passed to correct a terrible situation faced by a handful of women each year has turned into an unstoppable juggernaut. Then there's the question of homosexuality. I've remarked before that <laughs> nothing at all to me who goes to bed with who. I've got gay friends, nothing could concern me less than a man or woman's sexual proclivities. Because some gay men were being prosecuted by the police in the 1960s, it was felt that the law needed to be changed, so sodomy was legalised. Actually, this was a completely unnecessary step, and I will explain why. It's true that sodomy between two men was technically illegal at that time in the 1960s, but so too was buggery between a man and a woman. As the law stood at that time, if a husband, with the full consent of his wife, took her up the back passage, he could face life imprisonment. <laughs> I need hardly add that this law was never enforced and there wasn't the remotest chance of anybody <laughs> ending up at the old bathy and going to prison for life for taking his wife in that way. 
any more than was the case if two men committed sodomy in the privacy of their own home. The problem was that gay men didn't do all this in their homes. They were at it in public lavatories, graveyards, parks and all kinds of other public and inappropriate places. Older viewers will probably remember some of what I'm talking about now. At one time you couldn't go to Hampstead Heath or past Jack Straw's castle, the public house there, without tripping over men committing sodomy. The practice of what was known as cottaging, for instance, that is to say men having sex with others in public lavatories, was a real nuisance for ordinary people. I remember going for a piss and hearing men in the nearby cubicle engaged in noisy sex. Uh, I'm broad-minded enough, but some people objected to um, finding that their children had encountered such activity when they nipped in to spend a penny. So what was a mild annoyance for me was actually something exceedingly unpleasant for a young child. This is why gay men were prosecuted in the 1960s, for making a nuisance of themselves in public, not for simply enjoying their lifestyle in private. As a result, a law was passed legalising sex between men, and this has ended up in the position now that two men are able to marry. Again, a law intended to benefit a small number of people has now affected us all with even the police having rainbows painted on their cars to indicate their support for homosexuality. Another minor problem was that some men beat their wives and some couples were desperately unhappy in their marriages. As long as divorce was very difficult, most couples who were unhappy stuck at it, usually for the sake of the children, and as a result marriages tended to last. Laws were introduced in the 60s to make it easier to get divorced and the long-term consequence has been the collapse of marriage as an institution and a generation of children who have never known a stable family life. Many of my friends have divorced, changed partners and had children by more than one person. In not one single case has this been because a wife was being beaten or abused, which is the usual example which is cited when people want a relaxation of divorce laws. They, my friends, simply abandoned a marriage and broke up for the most trifling reasons, such as the magic has gone out of the relationship, or there's no spark anymore, or they simply meet someone else and decide it's time to end the relationship with their children's mother or father. I know more than one child whose parents have split up like this on several occasions and this has ended with a child who had siblings by her father in one place and others by her mother elsewhere and with none of whom she lives. Great, eh? This was a direct result of loosening the divorce laws. It taught people that marriage was not forever and that if things got a little rough then the answer was simply to jump ship and try elsewhere rather than sticking at it and trying to make it work. Like most people who were teenagers in the 1960s, I was enthusiastically in favour of abolishing the old-fashioned morality and starting a new and progressive way of doing things. It has proved though to be a disaster and if there were a way of returning to a society which gave most children stable homes and a normal upbringing, I would be greatly in favour of doing so.